Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can write a C-sharp program to display the Fibonacci series. In mathematics, the Fibonacci numbers, commonly denoted like this, form a sequence called as the Fibonacci sequence, where the first number is 0 and the second number is 1 and after that, every number is the sum of previous two numbers. So we can say that the first number is 0, second number is 1, so f0 is 0 and f1 is 1 and when this n value becomes greater than 1 it will be n minus 1 plus f n minus 2. Um, the Fibonacci series will look like the first number 0, second number 1 and after that every number is the sum of previous two numbers. So 0 plus 1 is 1 and after that 1 plus 1 2 then 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 2 5 5 plus 3 8 13 and like that. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user to enter how many numbers we have to display in the Fibonacci series or how many terms he wants us to display in the Fibonacci series and after that we will display that many numbers or that many terms of the Fibonacci series. Here uh, I have already written some code. I have uh, created the namespace called as the Fibonacci and then we have this class program and inside this class we have the static void main method and then I have declared a variable and I have called it as number and in this number variable we are going to store the number of terms that we are going to display in the Fibonacci series and after that I have uh, used this console.writeLine method and I have displayed this message and uh, it says enter the number of terms and after seeing this message the user is going to enter a number and we are reading that using the console.readLine and since this readLine method will return the user input in string form we are converting that to integer form by using convert.toint32 and after that we are storing that in this number variable. Now here the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare the other variables that we are going to use. You already know that in the Fibonacci series the number is the sum of previous two numbers so we need variables for storing the previous two numbers. I'm going to call them as t1 and t2 in short for uh, term 1 and term 2 and after that we need to calculate the next term and for that also I'm going to use a variable. I'm going to call it as next term. Now we already know that the first number of the Fibonacci series is 0 so I'm going to initialize t1 with a value of 0 and then I'm going to initialize t2 with a value of 1 that's because the second number is 1 and I'm not going to initialize this next term. Now here after taking the input from the user we know how many terms or how many numbers of the Fibonacci series that we have to print. So we will use a for loop in here and we need a loop counter variable. I'm going to call it as counter and I will initialize this with a value of 1 and how long we want to continue this for loop. This will depend on the number entered by the user. So we want to run this for loop that many times. So here the condition will be counter variable containing a value less than or equal to number. And after that we will uh, increment the value of the counter variable. So here what we are doing is if the user is going to enter let's say I want the five terms of the Fibonacci series then this for loop will run five times and it will display five numbers or the five terms of the Fibonacci series. Now here inside this for loop what we're going to do is first we will display the first number or the first term of the Fibonacci series which is present in this t1 variable. I'm going to use console.writeLine method and here we will format the output. So I need a placeholder and after that I'm going to add a space in here and here for the placeholder the value will be from t1. Okay, now this will display the value stored in this t1 variable and for the first iteration it will display 0 because t1 variable is initialized with a value of 0 here. Now in this for loop what we're going to do is we're going to construct our logic in such a way that for every iteration this t1 variable will contain a term of the Fibonacci series and we will display it here. Now the next thing is we know that the next term of the Fibonacci series is the addition of previous two numbers. So let us calculate the next term and we will write next term equal to t1 plus t2. So now 
we know what is the next term. Now, as I said before, in this program, for every iteration, this statement where we are displaying the value of the t1 variable will display the number of the Fibonacci series or the term of the Fibonacci series. And here, the next number of this Fibonacci series after printing 0 is present in this t2 variable. So what we are going to do is we will store that value which is present in the t2 variable in the t1 variable. So we are storing the next number that we have to print in this t1 variable. So when this for loop goes for the next iteration, it will display the value which is present in this t2 which is the next term of the series. Now after that what we're going to do is we will store the next term that we have calculated in this t2 variable. So we will write t2 equal to next term. Now if it is confusing, don't worry. After running this program, I'm going to explain how this will work. Okay, now that's it. We have uh, written the program. Let's run this. Enter the number of terms. I'm going to say 5. It will display 0, 1, 1, 2 and 3. Now here, if you want the output in single line, then you can change this one to right instead of right line. Okay, now the output will appear in the single line instead of separate lines. Okay, now let's see how this program is going to work. Okay, in this program, now let's say the user is going to enter the number as 5. He wants to display the 5 terms or 5 numbers of the Fibonacci series. And that value will be stored in this number variable. So the number variable will get 5. And after that, we are using this for loop. And in this for loop, we have the counter variable initialized to the value of 1. So the counter variable will get a value 1. And then in this program, we have other variables like t1, t2 and next term. Now here we have initialized t1 variable with a value of 0. We have initialized t2 variable with a value of 1. Now the first thing happens is the counter variable will be initialized with a value of 1. So counter will get 1 and then this condition will be checked whether counter variable is containing a value less than or equal to value present in the number variable. Number is containing 5, counter is containing 1. So this condition satisfies. So we execute the body of this for loop. So and first it will display the value present in the t1 variable. So in the output screen we get 0 and then a space. And after that, we are computing the next term and that is t1 plus t2. t1 is containing 0, t2 is containing 1 and that is equal to 1 and that will be stored in the next term variable. After that, t1 variable will get t2 variables value. So t1 is containing 0, t2 is containing 1. So this 1 will be stored in the t1 variable and after that, t2 will get the value present in the next term variable. So next term is containing 1 and that will be stored in the t2 variable. Now that's the end of the body of this for loop. So the control will go to this part. It will increment the value of the counter variable. Counter variable was containing 1 and now it will be 2. And again this condition will be checked whether 2 is less than or equal to 5 which is true and that's why we execute the body of this for loop again. Now. We are displaying the value present in the t1 variable. t1 is containing 1. So that will be printed to the screen. And then we compute the next term which is t1 plus t2. 1 plus 1 which will be 2. And after that t1 will get t2 variables value. So which will be 1. And t2 will get the next term value which is equal to 2. And after that the counter variables value will be incremented again. So now it will become 3. So 3 is less than or equal to 5 which is true. So we execute the body of this for loop again. We will display the value present in the t1 variable which is 1. So that will be displayed on the screen and then we compute the next term which is t1 plus t2. So 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3 and that will be stored in the next term variable. After that t1 will get t2 variables value which is 2 and t2 will get the next term variables value which is 3 and that's the end of the for loop so we go to this part and we will increment the value of this counter variable now the counter variable will, will become 4 and again 4 is less than or equal to 5 which is true and we execute the body of this for loop so we will uh, display the uh, value present in the t1 variable which is 2 
So we get that in the screen and then again the next term is computed. So it will be 2 plus 3 which is equal to 5 and after that t1 will get t2 variables value which is 3 and t2 will get next term variables value which is equal to 5 and after that again the counter variables value will be incremented by 1 and this time it will become 5 and again this condition will be checked counter less than or equal to number which is true so we execute the body of this for loop and we will display 3 which is the value present in this t1 variable and then we compute the next term which is uh, 3 plus 5 which is equal to 8 and t1 will get t2 variables value which is 5 and t2 will get next terms value which is 8 and after that the counter variables value will be incremented by 1 so, so it will become 6 now and now this condition will fail because 6 is not less than or equal to 5 so it is false so we stop executing the for loop and we come out of it and we have this one in the output screen which is the 5 Fibonacci numbers or 5 Fibonacci terms so this is it guys for this video thank you for watching if you like it hit the like button if you don't like it hit the dislike button if you want to say something write that in the comment box for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll see you later in the next video